noticed that your sourdough is becoming too sour, that there is too much acidity. Now, the only thing to measure that is doing a titration. And for a titration, you need distilled water, you need a solution of sodium hydroxide at one mole that you can find in a drugstore, I think. Uh, you need sourdough, and then you need this kind of equipment. You need a beaker. You need this kind of magnetic thing that when you put on, on this uh, little device, you see that it's stirring, it will mix my starter. Can you push it out a little, Carl, so you can... With the water. There we go. You can come and... Uh, so just the magnetic field, and that will allow me to mix my water and my sourdough. So what I need is to scale 10 grams of sourdough. So Carl, I just went live on, on uh, Perfect. Just can you quickly tell us what we're doing? We are going to measure the amount of organic acids that will be found in a sourdough. Okay. So I need 10 grams. Manfred, I'm taking yours. Yes. Your rice sourdough. When was it? Uh, from 2004, no? This one? That's the one from 2004. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> March. Born. It's a mother of mine. <laughs> <laughs> when was it refreshed last? Then I had a fresh open. So I'm writing yesterday, down. Yesterday. So I have 10.1 grams <laughs> of sourdough. Start stirring. Magic. I'm going to add the remaining water. Like you're Leonardo da Vinci. <laughs> no, 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 no. And now I'm going to measure the pH. pH is around 4.05. So you cannot do this without this equipment? No, this you can do so far, what we did. Yeah, I think if you have the right equipment, you can do it. Yeah. Now, now I will start adding so the, the sodium hydroxide, so you have here the scientific writing of that. So it's a dilution of what they call it one mole. So little by little, I'm going to open the little valve here and the droplets are going to fall. Now, this is highly uh, base, so it's a very high pH. So what is going to happen? That when I'm adding little by little the droplets of sodium hydroxide, that my pH is going up. And I will add sodium hydroxide until my pH is reaching 8.4. And at 8.4, we close the valve and then we will measure the amount of solution that we've used and that we will divide by the weight of the sourdough and multiply by 10 and that is going to give us the number of total organic acids present in the sourdough and that is something that is varying a lot and that is actually accumulating when a sourdough becomes too sour is because there is too much organic acids in there Okay, ready? So if you keep an eye on the pH meter now, it starts going up. Mm -hmm. Are you counting drops? What are you doing? No, no, we will, we will measure here afterwards. So, and we stop at 8.4, because above 8.4, you can't measure them anyhow. So it's what you measure at 8.4. That's the total titratable acidity. Okay. 
Mission Impossible? Why? What do you feel? You don't feel like Leonardo da Vinci? Do you feel like Mission Impossible? Guys, <laughs> 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 too much So I'm doing this because often people say, but yeah, I have a pH meter and I control my sourdough. That is nothing to do with what this is the only right measurement in order to control the stability of your sourdough. Because you can have two sourdoughs with the same pH but a different level of acidity. I often compare it to a bank account. You both people you can have the same bank account by two people with the same credit card but a different amount of money on the bank. That's the total of organic acids. So pH doesn't always equal organic acids? No, okay. not at all. That was an important point there. That's the TTA. Yeah. That's a lot the, of whole grains too can have a... a if buffering? you have like a white, a white sourdough and you have a whole grain sourdough, it's usually the whole grain sourdough that has more acidity mm -hmm. and uh, it's usually because because of what's available in nutrients for fermentation and the, the bran acts as buffers as well. That's why your pH might be the same. The bran kind of hides the, the raw acidity. Voila. So we reached 8.4. I've closed the valve and we used... We used like 13.89. Who is calculating? Nobody? Yeah, I guess. What? This cancels this. It's this. Yeah. Minus 1%. Mm -hmm. So 13.89. Mm -hmm. Very good. So, uh, uh, Manfred, your sourdough has an acidity right now of 13.6, okay? But I cannot guarantee you that if we would refresh and you would measure it tomorrow that you will have 13.6. And um, It will depend <coughs> at what time we will measure and at what temperature we will preserve your sourdough. Carl? So the age. Could you write down the pH underneath of it? Because I think that's an important thing for a lot of people to realize. The pH of this sourdough? Yeah. Was yeah. Four points. Well, I will, I will put it, we will measure it straight in the jar to be sure. Because a lot, of, I think that's where a lot of people get mixed up. They think, you know, they don't realize organic acids and pH are different. No, no, how higher, ah, pH? pH, how low the number? pH is a scale from 0 to 14. Everything that is below is sour. Everything that is above is base. And water, water is 7, approximately. So in here we have a pH for this sourdough at the pH of 4.02, yeah, with an acidity of 13.6. No, 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 no. Uh, a sponge, a polish, for example, yeah. if you would measure a polish right yeah. after, you have zero. There is no acidity okay, in there. So it goes down. Yeah. It goes, so yeah. zero no is zero. Yeah. yeah. Imagine 200 degrees of TTA is very acid. What's the optimum? An optimal? No, that's that's for each baker will have his preference. The amount of acidity that you have in your sourdough for some people like a little bit of acidity, especially when you make dry bread, you need acidity in order to make your flour bakeable. And if you have a rye with very low number, then you need a low pH or a lot of 
method. If you if you know this, mm -hmm. you know the exact amount of sourdough that you have to add to your rye flour in order to acidify. And that will influence the way your bread will be baked, how well it will be baked, and when it's cooling down and you slice it, that your slices do not stick together. What if you don't have this? What can you do? Then you just guess. No, you can taste. <laughs> You know, you test once, once you, you try, you add 40% of uh, sourdough on rye flour, or you go up to 100%, it doesn't matter. It's finding the right results. But in, in, a, in a, a bakery, a rye bakery that respects itself, they measure this. Or they have done it so many times that they know exactly the amounts and the times and the temperatures. It's all about measurement. I have tried one thing because I tried to get the, my rye bread sour. Oh, yes. But the starter I have, I feed it to a rye starter when I, I can bring the bread starter to the workshop. But the rye bread, is, I want it to be sour, but it doesn't get sour. You know? you, do you refresh your you refresh your starters quite often? Though. Yeah, I feed fresh three, four times. So maybe you need to refresh less to get it more sour. The longer you wait, the longer you refresh more. You guys can all write her later. So you have to wait. No, no, the, not the rye. The rye I will refresh maybe two times. Okay. Overnight, like overnight, and then in the morning a little refreshing, and then start making. And I do like hundred duck. Uh, how you say? Ac inoculation. Yeah, inoc inoculation. Like sometimes I do hundred percent of rye stock in one press. Yeah, Yeah, you know. To to speed up the formation of organic acids. The temperature is the most important. So the higher you go in temperature, up to 35, then you produce the highest amount of organic acids. Up to 35. 35. Yeah. More than 35 we do not recommend. Mm -hmm. It's like yogurt. Why does he beat on that? To, he beats on that to get the, the flour that is sticking to the sides out of the mocking. Oh, okay. Oh, that's right. He's putting flour in, not grain. Okay. So that is the reason I think if I have a falling number, maybe 130 or 120, I take 45 degrees warm water because I want the dough 100% right. It wants to work in 30 degrees, 30, 32 degrees. And I think it's really good. The bread is fresh the whole week and you get no problem. So, uh, 